Chris with you. This is one of the best maneuvers there is in tailwheel flying, the wheel landing. I'll play this for you one time speed, then I'll go back and apply a play-by-play -play to show you the fundamentals of the wheel landing. You do a good wheel landing, ultra low descent rate right before touchdown. Clearly make the wheels walk down. It's a hard thing to get to know. Seven to Mike, uh, turning crossing. Seven to Mike, thank you. A little bit of right cross when it looks like, trying to get myself on center line. Up to seven, eight. straight to the numbers for me. Uh, yes, yeah, straight to the numbers, ground shot. A little bit of power here to control the display. Looking to just what I call find the wheels here. Looking to just find the wheels. I don't ride in here, pretty close, pretty close. Or just a little bit. And then right about here when the nose starts to rotate back is when I pull the stick back. Right in there, stick back. Still focusing far away, still keeping on center line. All right, here we go, carburetor hits cold. Okay, so now that you've seen the wheel landing demonstration, let me go ahead and do a play-by-play -play to show you all the fundamentals and the basics of the wheel landing. Okay, so here's how they do the uh, mechanics of a wheel landing. First off, I'm looking for any kind of crosswind. I'll look at an approach in windsock to, to indicate that to me. On short final, I fly either five miles per hour or five knots faster than what I'll fly a three-point landing at. In the Cetabria, uh, 70 miles per hour is what I use. I'm keeping a constant aim point on final, and it's not until ground effect that I change my eyesight. So once I get the airplane gets into ground effect, I'm entirely looking outside. I'm looking two places. First off, I'm focus, focusing far away uh, at where the center line of the runway meets the horizon, the in infinity point. And I'm looking for a constant uh, cowl to horizon spacing to make sure I've got that level airplane attitude. Second, I'm using my peripheral vision to judge descent rate. You want a really, really small descent rate right before the wheels touch down. So that's the two places I'm looking. I'm looking far away, and I'm using my peripheral vision to judge descent rate. Once the wheels touch down, you're going to go stick forward. Simultaneously, you want to bring the throttle to idle. The stick forward, you're not jamming the stick way forward as fast as you can. It's just a fist width forward and holding it there. It's not a violent maneuver. It's really just moving your fist forward and keeping it constant. Once the wheels are on the runway, you'll eventually see the, the nose rotate upwards. You'll see that because you're starting to lose elevator effectiveness. Once that happens, bring the stick back in the airplane and bring the airplane to a, either roll it to a stop or in case you're doing a touch and go, apply power and go forward again. All right. Learning points with the wheel landing. Always remember to look for the crosswind. We looked for that approach in windsock. Airspeed, I do it about five miles per hour or five knots faster than I do the uh, three-point landing. Remember to make your focus be on that infinity point where the center line meets the horizon. You're looking for a very small descent rate. I use my peripheral vision to do that. So on short final before your wheels touch down, I'm entirely as outside looking at that infinity point, looking at my descent rate. Once the wheels touch down, stick forward and throttle idle. Remember, it's just about a fist width forward. It's not stick full forward. It's not violent. It's just forward and hold. Once you see that nose rotate upwards, bring the stick back. Now you're in a three-point attitude. Now you're either uh, taxiing or setting up for another takeoff. Make your uh, wheel landings good. This is one of the best maneuvers in tailwheels.